and sometimes using the back door is better than using the front door. It's time to review the SXK and ProVapes Bantam box revision. <laughs> So here is the box for the SXK Bantam box revision. Let's take a look at what you get inside. So here is the Bantam box revision and it measures in at 55 by 55 by 25 millimeters and has a wattage range of 5 to 30 watts and weighs around about 110 grams and is powered by the Sevo 30 chipset. Now before we go into this review, I know absolutely nothing about billet boxes and stuff like that, so I cannot address any similarities or differences or anything like that. All I know is that this is kind of like the thing that you find in a billet box. Um, yeah, billet boxes have never really been my thing, but we're, you know, we're reviewing this today and we're gonna see what it is like. So we'll start from the top and work our way down. You've got your 510 drip tip in there which does have the extended drip tip connector in there at the moment. You've got your little screen up the top there, the back panel which is removable, and that shows you your little tank section in here which does have the Nautilus coil inside. Your 18 350 battery slot there with a battery ribbon, up and down buttons, really, really nice indeed. You've got your airflow slots down the bottom here to allow the airflow to go to the internal tank. Fire button there another removable panel and you can remove all this as well and look at the chipset inside you can see where the wiring goes into like the battery bay on the other side bantam box clearly labeled in there nice set of magnets either side as well if we check for battery door or door movement in general uh, this kind of fire button side does have a little bit of up and down movement there whereas this back one even though it's got that in there we'll move that out of the way we'll put that in there yeah, a very, a very slight bit of wiggle. So let's open it up and have a look at the tank inside. Now to get into the tank, you've got to unscrew the drip tip connector thing. Now you can swap this out for the low profile one, which is included, um, it's completely up to you. Pull the tank section out like so, and this is your lovely little tank here. There we go, have a quick look around. So inside this, it's got the Nautilus coil. To get this out, just simply pull it out like so. You've got kind of like a bridge, kind of chimney extension piece there. Your Nautilus coil, 4.2 to 5 volts, 1.8 ohms, 10 to 14 watts. Now you can take this apart to replace it, take that chimney section off, take the airflow base section off like so, replace your coil, put it back in. Nice adjustable airflow on here as well. So you've got your airflow slot down at the bottom there. Open it up, close it down, and it's repeated on the other side. Screw that back on, put that in. Now this bit, it doesn't really matter how much you push it in because when you screw this all back together, that will push that chimney back down into place and clamp it into the jobby wobby. So what we're gonna do now is get some e-liquid Fill this tank up to get the coil nice and juiced up, ready for the review. I pulled the wrong end of the thing off, but who cares? We can put it back on. Squeeze that e-liquid in. There we go, that took a day and a bloody age. But what we're gonna do now is put that bung back on. Push that one in there like so. I've had a problem with this coming out and not going back in and stuff like that. You've kind of got to thumb it in a little bit. Now you let that soak for around about, you know, five minutes to let that coal get nice and saturated, and then you should be ready to vape. Put that to one side. Now this is the only thing that I know um, that is similar to the billet box, and this is the Bora silicate glass tank section or something like that. You can put loads of different coily bits and bobs and pieces in. I really don't know. Um, apologies about my naivety about this, and excuse the juice, but you can put them things in there. You know, I've been vaping for four or five years, um, probably a bit more, and I know absolutely fuck all about these. Um, yeah, you can put them in there. Good for you. 
buy yourself a fucking Christmas present. But this is what this is anyway. You've got your glass tank section on the front, rubber gasket to create a seal. Inside there, you have got your little coil. I believe this is a ceramic coil in here. Now this one as well, if I can, look, this one come with a little kind of black plastic reducer on there to reduce the airflow. Not sure whether that's good or not, or whether it's meant to be in there, but that is what it is. You can pop your coil out, push it out like so. And this is a little 1.5 ohm, nine to 13 watt coil. It is absolutely blooming tiny. Absolutely blooming tiny. If we compare that to the size of an 18650 battery, look at it, so bloody tiny. So you can use that as well if you do so wish. Um, but in this thing here, you can put tubes and connectors and stuff like that and put RBA decks and you know all that all that good stuff that things use uh, so you can do that as well um, but yeah once again apologies for my naivety um, but I've really never used anything like this before so uh, you now I've got nothing to compare it to so when you're done with that opening it up you can push that close like so fill it up with your jizzle snizzle squeeze it on in now this is a completely new kind of, um, excuse me, completely new thing for me, filling e-liquid like this. I don't think I've ever dealt with anything like this before. Um, squeeze it in like so. Massive capacity. And I believe these are interchangeable as well with the ones from the billet box. Not quite sure, but as with the other one, leave this to sit for around about five minutes and then you shall be ready to vape. So what we're gonna do now is put this back in here. Now remember, um, I pushed that up a little bit too high. Or I've pushed it up a little bit too high now. So you push that back in there like that, right? And what you do is you get your drip tip adapter jobby, uh, this one here, screw that back in like so. And then when you're pushing that in, that pushes the other thing down. There we go. And then that makes a nice, lovely connection down there. So what we're gonna do now is put the battery in. This does come supplied with the 18350 battery. It is 1,100 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. There we go, not sure who the brand is. It's just made in China, maximum discharge, 10 amps. So we put that in, positive side up, as clearly marked in the battery bay there. Slot it on in. And when you start this up, you want to keep this back door open. Ooh, uh, misses, so you can funny around with the screen. So let's have a look at the screen in a little more detail. So this is the top part of the mod, and this is the screen here. So it's five clicks to turn on. Get your boot up screen, SXK. There we go. So you've got your wattage up there, resistance, what power um, kind of firing mode you're in, your voltage and your battery level. To control the wattage, obviously, press the up button, goes up in 0.1 increments, or you can hold it down to make it go a little bit faster, all the way up to 30 watts, all the way down to five watts. There we go. If, let's do some battery combinations, uh, battery combinations, button combinations, so plus and minus, it locks the power. So you can fire, but you can't lock them two. Now power locked really should be the fire button. And I can't really see the point in that because when you put this back thing on, it's gonna stop you from pressing the buttons anyway. So let's unlock that like so. Fire button and the minus. That changes your fire profile sense, so it's in hard, soft, normal. On the other one there, fire and plus. No, there was one that changes, it flips the screen round. Not sure, I think it was three clicks that flips the screen round. There we go, that flips the screen around, there you go, depending on what handed you are. And then when you're done with that, press the fire button, one, two, three, four, five. And then you are back to normal. So that pretty much goes through a very kind of like naive and uneducated view of the Bantam box revision. So let's have a, let's go back up to FaceTime and give my overall thoughts and opinions on it. So right, we are back up top with the SXK and Pro Vapes Bantam box. We've got that Nautilus Core Jobby Wobby in there. Um, I hope you enjoyed kind of like my completely unknown download section. I'm really not experienced with these type of devices, but you know, it was sent for review, so I thought I'd review it anyway and give you kind of like a layman's unexperienced kind of review on it. So yeah, we've got it at 14 watts. The cord is reading 
0.86 ohms. We've got it in the normal firing mode with the airflow fully open. Let's take it for a two. Now that was a direct lung vape going on there and the flavor is pretty damn good. Um, I wouldn't say it's absolutely amazing, but it's pretty good for a Nautilus coil, you know, at 14 watts, which is the maximum wattage. And it seems to be handling that and the juice quite blooming well. I'd say the flavor at the moment is around about a seven out of 10. So let's get the right panel off to begin with. And let's scroll down the airflow to around about half open, half closed. Now I do like the, the controlly wheel on the uh, on the airflow control there. It is really nice and easy to get to, nice and grippy as well, so you can change it very, very easily indeed. So airflow half open. Still a direct lung vape. Yes, it is restricted, but it is a direct lung vape. Let's try and mouth to lung it. A very loose mouth to I keep on taking the wrong bloody panel off. Um, this shows how much I bloody know about these things. So let's uh, crank it down. It is very, very small now. Not that you're going to see it, but it is a fraction of what it used to be. A nice loose mouth to lung draw. The flavor is all right. Um, I would still say it's a little bit too loose for a mouth to lung vape for me personally. I prefer my mouth to lung vape to be a little bit tighter. The flavor, you know, in mouth to lung in and closing the airflow down, I wouldn't say the flavor is that great to be honest with you. So let's direct lung it. So yeah, that was that. I quite enjoy that call. So what we're gonna do now is get the right panel off again and we're gonna swap it out for that um, borosilicate glass jobby wobby that everyone's blooming far arsing about because it's in a billet box and I, fuck knows and fuck cares about billet boxes um so we're putting that bor borosilicate glass jobby thing in let's all scream about it because it can do things uh honestly don't fucking care um we're gonna crank it down it's between 10 and 13 watts so we're gonna go bang in the middle at 12 because I don't do odd numbers. It's reading it at 1.72 ohms. Let's take that for a two. Now the airflow is a little bit noisier on that on the inhale. Um, I'll point the airflow towards the mic now. But I think that airflow definitely needs kind of closing down. Now it did come with that little jibby wibby woo. This little plastic jibby wibby, um, we're going to whack that on because you can't exactly control the airflow with this. Um, so I presume that is why they've put that on there, just to restrict the airflow ever so slightly. As said previously, I'm not experienced at all with these billet box doohickeys. Um, so we're going to put that thing on, the wangly dangly bit, put it back in, and then screw that top thing back in. And see if that makes an actual difference panel back on the right way let's go check atomizer low resistance bear with me while i sort this out there we go sort it out so let's take that for a two 1.58 ohms it's reading at 12 watts just for proofage there yeah, you can't read it, bollocks. That's much nicer. That is much nicer. Nice mouth to lung vape. The um the airflow could be a little bit more restricted for me personally. Um but apart from that, you know, the flavor I'm getting from this ceramic core is reasonable. I would say this is around about a 5.5 .5 or a 6 out of 10. Yes, it's, it's actually reasonable. I think it will get a lot better with time with this ceramic coal. But it does taste really like clean and pure. You, you haven't got kind of like a dry background kind of thing. It's really hard to explain. Um, yeah, you haven't got kind of like a dry kind of backgroundy flavor going on. So yeah, that was that. So what I'm going to do as well, I've got a little army of drip tips down here that I've enjoyed putting on here. So I've got this little black one, not sure what it's from, but it fits on there quite nicely. Quite like that. I've got a little uh, silvery one. I think this is from a smock tank. I think this is from um, one of the earlier smock blooming sub tanks. 
that is quite nice as well um, if you like big things in your bloody mouth and I've got a bit of a smaller uh, metallic drip tip I quite like the look of this on there as well there is a little bit of a gap but I think it looks pretty sweet on there and another one I've liked using is the drip tip from the Archery Pal um, 18650 just because it's red and it fits on there really really nicely check atomizer see all I've done is put a fucking drip tip on there So yeah, that was that. So what I'm going to do now is swap it back out for the original like Nautilus coil because I enjoy that a lot more than this ceramic coil thing. And we'll go through pricing and all my pros and cons and that about this. Um, so let's go through uh, pros and cons to begin with. Now we'll start with um, flavouring clouds. Um, you know, the flavour is pretty damn respectable. I'm going to do like two or three things at once. The flavour is pretty damn respectable. I can't find the Nautilus coil thing whilst I'm looking around here so I apologize there it is um, yeah I really do like the Nautilus coil um, like attachment you get in here um, you know the Nautilus coils were a blooming good thing back in the day and it's nice to see them kind of revamped into a more modern kind of thing the flavor and clouds you're getting on it are perfectly acceptable around about a 7 out of 10 no complaints about them um, average Nautilus coil life to be honest with you um, as for that other little coil that little ceramic coil on there you know it's good at times but it's bad at times um, I haven't used it all that much. I've only tested it on and off just to get the, the rough flavor and stuff like that. But, you know, um, I don't know. It's just not for me. But it, if, you know, one of, you're one of these uh, billet box users and stuff like that, you you may have all the blooming wangles and dangles that go in it and, you know, think the sun shines out its fucking ass. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, it's not screaming blooming from the hilltops for me personally. Now, um, in terms of construction of this little bantam box... The doors are a little bit flappy dappy do, um, which is slightly annoying. And another thing that I can't get to work properly on this is the shortened drip tip converter thingy, the little flush mount thing that you put in the top. Every time I put that in, the resistance is jumping around like mad. And I've tried doing it really tight, really loose, and anywhere in between, and I just can't seem to get it right and the resistance is just jumping around everywhere so i haven't really been using that but apart from that the overall construction apart from the doors is pretty damn good um you know i really do like this no drip tip part of the top um i like the adjustability of the airflow the panels do get a little bit confusing at times um i know they've got one on the front but I really, I don't see the point of having one on the front, a panel on the front, because I keep taking that off, because, you know, you go for the first panel, I keep taking that off and thinking, oh, oh, I can't adjust the wattage or, you know, change the bottle out or anything like that. I've got to go to the other door. Um, sometimes using the back door is better than using the front door. So um, please take note of that. Um, if we go into price as well, on the Pro Vapes website, this is currently priced. The version I've got today, the red version, is £57.99. But it does go up to £63.99 if you do want the gold plated or the silver polished version. Um, they do have black, silver, green, orange, bronze, purple, grey, which is kind of like a rainbowy jobby. And um, this one here, the red version. And yeah, the, the gold plated one looks pretty good, but is a little bit like pimp styly at the moment. Um, if we go onto the um, Sakowin website, they're between $75 and $85. Um, so overall, it is a little bit pricey. It is a little bit pricey indeed. Um, but if you're into this kind of thing and looking for something like this that's similar to a billet box, oh, I really don't know about them, but similar to a billet box but smaller and does different things and stuff like that, you know, this may be one for you, but I'm not quite sure. But what do I think to this overall? Because we're getting into 10 minutes for this final section. Um yeah overall it's a nice little device i'm not sure if i'm going to continue using it in the future it's, it just seems more of like um kind of like a status symbol or something like that rather than a product that i'd use for day-to-day -day use it's like oh look at me i've got this um but for me personally it's not that it's just a another box mod and you know one that i'll probably give away to a friend or someone like that um but personally it's not one for me but you know overall it's a nice little bit of kit 
So I'd like to thank the lovely people at Sacco Inn for sending this through for the purpose of review. I've been the Devil Vapor, and you've been watching Devil Vapor's Vape Reviews.